that was the free part. Now I'll come to today's lesson. So could you transfer water from a reservoir or a swimming pool up to a water tower? Yeah. How could you do it? Well, you could get a bucket. You could fill your bucket, and you could hike up the stairs and dump it in. And that would take forever, right? But you could do it. We would say you are doing work. You are transferring energy from your Wheaties for breakfast, or Pop-Tart, or whatever it was, to potential energy in the water. This water up here has potential energy because of gravity. You could, for example, turn your faucet on, and the water comes rushing out because it has potential energy, right? And you could use that to spin a turbine and make a little bit of electricity, or something else. So this has energy because it's been lifted up. Lifting it up takes energy. If you have a pump, maybe you're using electricity to lift it up, okay? But we are doing work. However, if you carry it with a bucket, it'll take you forever, right? So you will not be transferring very much energy every second. But if you've got a big old pump, you can transfer a lot of energy per second. This idea of how much energy can be transferred per second is called power, all right? So here's going to be our definition of power. Power is the rate that energy is transferred from one form to another. When energy is transferred from one form to another, the rate at which it's transformed is known as the power. You can put this in your toolbox. It's the last equation for the unit. Power is the rate that energy is transferred from one form to another. And anytime you hear the word rate, you should be thinking that means something divided by time, right? Hey, Josh, is that video still running? Yes. Okay, thanks. I tried it earlier and cut off halfway through. So, power is the work. W is the work. That's the energy transfer, right? That's the variable we use. We say work, but we mean energy transfer. So, power is the energy transfer divided by the time it takes. And our standard unit for power is going to be the watt, which is a joule per second. So when you did the warm up and you calculated how much energy the winch transferred every second, you were finding the power of the winch in watts. Where else have you heard the word watts? Oh. Give an example. Yeah, you get a 100 watt light bulb maybe, right? Or a 60 watt light bulb? Yeah. Anybody have their Mac charger with them? Grab it. Oh, darn. Do you want me to unplug it? Nope. Look at the side of your charger. It will tell you. There you go, baby. Is it, is it rubbed off or did we see on there how many watts that is? Really science. Can you see it? Forty-five watts. That means that her little charger transfers forty-five joules of energy every second from the electrical grid to her computer. Okay? Forty-five watts. Forty-five joules every second. I don't know why, but the teacher chargers are sixty-five watts. Mine's sixty-five watts. If you have a little tiny brick that come, came with your iPhone, you know those little tiny square ones? They're 10 watts. They transfer 10 joules of energy every second. So when you buy a charger, it'll tell you how much energy it transfers every second. That's the power, okay? If you've got a Tesla car, you probably don't want to charge it with your 10 watt brick, right? You need something like 10 kilowatt charger for your Tesla. Although if you've got a Tesla, you probably don't care about the extra cost of the charger. All right, so the standard unit of power is going to be the watt. Anybody here know, know who watt is named after? His name was James Watt, and he invented the, come on, Industrial Revolution people. You guys had history? James Watt invented the? He mentioned big, big event in the Industrial Revolution. 
is p mentioned, right? All right, so that's why we call it a y. All right, so units of power are generally watts, which are joules per second. But there's other ways to measure power. How might you measure the power of your lawnmower or your car or your truck? What? Horsepower. Yeah. What's a horsepower? It's the rate that a typical horse can transfer energy. So back in the old days, they were mining, and they had ore carts, and they would have a long cable that came up out of the mine and go over a pulley and hook it to a mining mule. And the mule would trudge down this long track, pulling this rope, which would pull a big part of ore out. And they would dump it, and they'd tell the dude to come back, and the mule would come back, and they'd lower it down, and they'd fill it up again, and he would pull it again. He was transferring energy from his oats to the potential energy of the mine cart. And so, the rate that energy can be transferred by a mule, generously called a horse, was called a horsepower. And the reason that mattered is because along came this newfangled invention, and if you want to sell a steam engine, how do you convince a mine owner he needs to buy a steam engine? You tell him it's the same energy transfer rate, the same power, as 10 mules. It's 10 horsepower, or five horsepower is the first one. Which is still pretty good. I mean, would you rather have a steam engine you throw coal into, or five horses going back and forth, feeding them oats, cleaning up the poop all day long, right? So early measures of power were compared to mining mules. So we use horsepower as that measure, okay? So one horsepower, put this in your toolbox, I mean in your conversion in the back, right? One horsepower turns out to be 745 joules of energy transferred every second from oats to potential energy of the coal. 745 joules of energy is transferred every second by a mining mule. So that's why we call it a horsepower. It's really a mule power. The guy selling the steam engine is trying to flatter the mine owner calling his mules horses. Now there's some other ways to measure power. Does anybody have a watch that has a fitness tracker on it? When you are running or exercising, it measures the power, the rate you are converting energy from your food reserves to kinetic energy and heat of your body. You know what units it uses? What? Calories is energy transfer. It's calories per minute. Yeah, your fitness tracker measures your, your power in calories per minute. How many calories you are burning every minute. And the harder you work, the more calories you burn per minute, right? So anytime you have a unit, and there's some other ones, BTUs per hour is like an air conditioner. How many BTUs of energy can be transferred every hour? Anytime you have an energy divided by time, that's a unit of power, okay? Your basal metabolism, the amount of energy it takes to make your body just work. So to stay warm and to pump your blood around and to uh, perform respiration and all those functions is about 2,000 calories per day. That's your basal power rate. You need about 2,000 calories a day just to stay alive, okay? If you have less, you're gonna start using up your reserves. And if you have more than 2,000 calories a day, your body stores them. How does your body store them? Fat. Why does it use fat? How come it doesn't store it in protein? Why couldn't it just build bigger muscles? Isn't the fat a long-term reserve? Why? Sort of. You could, I could store muscle. Wouldn't you rather have muscle growing instead of fat? Here's why. Fat is much higher density storage. Because of the molecular structure of fat, you can store nine calories per gram in fat. 
and you can only store four calories per gram in protein. This is the molecular structure the way the bonds connect. So fat is a high density storage. Your body can store fat more efficiently, or store energy in fat more efficiently. So if you take on more energy, more than 2,000 calories a day, and you're not burning more than 2,000 a day, your body stores it for later. Because when, you know, our ancestors were running around, there were times when there was lots of food to eat, and then there were lean times, especially in the winter, when we stored our energy for the winter. Um, so anytime you have energy divided by time, that's valid power. We are going to use watts. But occasionally, for comparison purposes, we'll convert to horsepower. Okay? I'll show you the example. So you guys got that in your toolbox? So here's an example of power. You get a 100 watt light bulb. So has anybody had Mr. Farmer back in the old days in Sugar Creek? You guys Sugar Creekers? Did you guys have chickens or ducks or something? Do you remember this? Okay, somebody told me that last year. Mr. Farmer raised ducks in class? Or incubated them? Yeah, so how do you how do you keep a duck egg warm? You just put a light bulb in there. Because a light bulb is not a light bulb. A light bulb is a heat bulb. It turns out that 100 watts means you've got 100 joules of energy going in every second. And this thing turns 90 joules into heat and only 10 joules into light. So it's 90% a heat bulb and 10% a light bulb. That means that unless you're trying to incubate your ducks, you're just wasting energy, right? This thing just produces a lot of heat. So incandescent light bulbs get really hot. You guys, anybody seen one? Yeah. They sold fashion, you guys? Sold them. They're hot, right? They're burning hot. You can't change them when they're just turned off. They produce heat. So eventually, we've gotten better and better light bulbs. Have you seen a curly guy like this? That's called a compact fluorescent. It uses high voltage electricity, so it's got a transformer here to excite electrons to higher energy levels when they fall back down to give off light. And they're more efficient. About half of their energy turns into light, and the other half turns into heat. So they use about 23 watts, and you get about 10 watts of light, and 13 watts of heat. So they're much cooler, and you don't need as much energy to get the same light. Nowadays we have uh, LEDs, and they're even better than 20 now. This is a little old. They're down to 16 or 15. So you're only using about 15 joules every second to get the same amount of light as this guy using 100 joules per second. So that's an example of how we use power. You buy a light bulb based on the rate it converts energy from electricity to light and heat. Okay? Yeah, a little bit of confusion. Let me back up. If you saw an M on a page, what would you think it meant? Do you think it would be mass? What if it looked like this? Mm, is it mass or meters? It depends on the context, right? You guys are pretty good at doing this with M. It gets really tricky with W, though. M could be mass if it's a variable like PE equals MGH. You guys know M is a mass, right? But if it's a measurement, like L, that's M stands for meters. So M has a different meaning if it's a unit or a variable, right? Same thing happens with W. So there tends to be a lot of confusion. When we're talking about variables, W is the work. It's the energy transfer. When we are looking at units, W is a watt. It means joule per second. It's a unit of power, which is not work. Okay? So you've got to be careful when you're reading your homework problems and you see like 300 W, don't put that in the W line of your variable list. It's not W, it's P. Okay? When you, a unit is W, it means it's power, it's watt. I'll point that out again when we get to an example. Hey, look, there's an example. So I want to solve three example problems for you. I've saved these so you don't feel like you need to scribble furiously. But let's just go through them and see what we can learn. So we've just finished our toolbox for the unit. We're done. So we're going to apply it. So on the first problem, I've got a lawnmower. So 
You can draw lawnmowers and little dudes pushing them and stuff, but for me, the most useful diagram right now is just thinking about potential energy due to fuel being converted to kinetic energy. So that's what I would kind of sketch with my diagram, but you can draw a lawnmower or whatever you want, okay? The lawnmower is going along the level ground, but we have three things to worry about right now. We have the power, we have the energy transferred, and we have the time. So, what is the 14 million joules? It is, joules is a unit of energy. So it's the work, it's the energy transferred. So this is 14 million, which I'm gonna write as 14 e to the six, which is also 14 times 10 to the six, which is also 1, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay? But I don't like putting zeros in because I always put one too many or one too few in and I get it wrong. All right, what else do we know? Wait, I just put in the wrong one after all that. It's the work. This is one, four times 10 to the six joules. And the time is in hours. But we gotta be careful, time needs to be in seconds. So what are you gonna put down here for the time? 3,600. 3,600 seconds. <coughs> There's the time. We're trying to find the power. Now, this is a pretty easy one to solve. It's not gonna break your brain. We are going to simply evaluate power equals work divided by time. Don't need to solve anything, right? We got the calculator there. We'll pick on Gus. Help him stay awake. Put your calculator, one, four, e to the six, or joules, divided by 3,600 seconds. 3,888 times. How many saying figures of that you can just repeat? Two? Yeah, you got two here. Yeah. So how? 3,800. Look at the next digit. I think it's 3,900. Oh, yeah. 3,900. Now, guys, here's one of the reasons we keep our units around. I keep telling you to keep your units, right? What is a joule per second? It's a watt. We put a W there, a watt there, not because that's what we're hoping works out. We just blindly stumbled along and hoped it was a watt. We put it there because our units tell us it's a watt. And that's an integrity check on your solution. Since I was looking for a unit of power, and I got a joule per second, that's a unit of power, I know my solution's probably right. If I would have got a joule times a second, you might have been hoping for power and put a watt, but a joule times a second is not a watt. Okay, so it checks your solution that way. All right, so my lawnmower is 3,900 watts. That's why we don't have a whole lot of electric lawnmowers. There's not a whole lot of batteries that can power 39 light bulbs very long. 39 terribly inefficient old light bulbs. Okay. Just to get an idea though, let's convert this. So how would we do a conversion? We would take 3,900 watts, and we've got to get rid of the watts and get horsepower. So where did the 745 go? It goes in the bottom. 745 watt is equal to 1.00 horsepowers. What you got, Gus? Keeping you awake here. Connor, check it. Take your answer, divide by 745. Mm. Five point two. Yep. 5.2 horsepower is the power of a typical lawnmower. Push so if you got a Rose, you can look and see what they are. You got five horsepower mowers, you got three horsepower mowers, you got eight horsepower mowers. Pick what you need, right? So you can compare them. They measure the transfer rate of the energy. By the way, what kind of energy do you transfer in a lawnmower? From what to what? Sarah? Um, what kind of energy goes into the lawnmower? 
Yeah, which is chemical potential energy, right? What kind of energy does it produce? Think about a lawnmower. What does the engine do? Turns into like, turns into kinetic energy. Yep, that's what a lawnmower does. All right, does that make sense? That's a pretty easy one, right? Okay. So there's my solution. Whoa. All right, second example I want to solve. 1980s day in school, what are you going to do? Fluff your hair out nice and big, right? Right, Damon? Got to frizz your hair out. So you get a hair dryer. Now, if you have a hair dryer, your hair dryer has a number on it. It's probably on the barrel because they like to brag about it. At my house, it was 1800 watt Conair. The 1800 on a hair dryer or the 2000 or the 1600, that's the watt, that's the power, that's the rate it converts energy from one form to another. What kind of energy goes into a hair dryer? Julia? Yep. What kind of energy comes out of the hair dryer? What, what's moving? You got kinetic energy and if it's any good, what else? Heat, right? Hopefully your air dryer produces hot air. So a hair dryer converts electrical energy to kinetic energy and thermal energy. Okay? And it does it at a rate of 1,800 joules of energy every second. That's the conversion rate. That's what it means to be an 1,800 watt hair dryer. Okay? Now, to fluff out your hair for May 1980s day, it takes you eight whole minutes. Right? And you get, yeah, this is serious. So I want to know, how much energy does that take? And what does it cost, right? Because your dad's probably gonna yell at you for wasting electricity if you run your hair dryer for eight minutes. What does it really cost to run a hair dryer for eight minutes? So let's work it out, okay? So, let's start by thinking about what energy is transferred to what. And this isn't really part of the problem, but it's on the concept exam. I will ask you, for example, what kind of energy is transferred uh, by a hair dryer or something. So we are going from electrical energy, so to Ke and heat. So that's just kind of for you to kind of think about what's going on. That's the conversion process. Now we have the power, we have the work, and we have the time. And here's where it gets confusing. What is that 1800? Okay. That's 1800 up there. Where does it go? The what? You desperately want to put in the W because it's got a W in it, right? But that's the, that's the mistake. 1800 watts is a unit of power. This is 1800 watts. That's where it gets confusing, okay? And you'll all make that mistake sooner or later. Just be careful. Watts is a unit of power. All right, what else do we know? We know one more thing, Dayton? The time is what? So we want that in, can you do that in your head? Or your calculator? Eight times 60? Eight times six? 480. And we are trying to find the energy transfer, which is the work, okay? So, we are going to solve um, the power equals the work divided by the time for W. So, how do I get W by itself? Multiply both sides by T, so power times time is the work. So the work will equal 1,800 watts which is joules per second, times 480 seconds, and that gives you some number. Help me there, Josh. 1,800 times 480. 864,000, is that what you said? Yeah. What units would that be? 
So you can tell what is a joule per second, and we're multiplying it by seconds, the seconds cancel, and we're left with joules, which is a unit of energy. So it works out, right? Our units check our work. All right, so there's the answer. Now, it turns out that a goofy way to measure energy is power times time. Because power equals the energy transfer divided by the time. You can multiply this by time, and power times time gives you an energy. Right? Which kind of makes sense. A power, joules per second, times the number of seconds gives you the energy, right? So, if I were to use 1,000 joules every second, and I would do that for an entire hour, 3,600 seconds, how much energy would that represent? So 1 times 3,600 is 3,600. You tack on three zeros. So that's 3,600,000 joules. Okay? So here's the goofy unit of energy. 1,000 joules per second is what we call one kilowatt, and 3,600 seconds is an hour. So a kilowatt hour is a unit of energy, and it's 3.6 million joules. And that's the goofy unit they sell us electricity in, kilowatt hours. So if you use 1,000 joules every second, for an entire hour, you've used a kilowatt hour of energy. 3,600 3, seconds, okay? So it turns out that Duke Energy charges us 10 cents for each kilowatt hour. So they got a meter outside your house, and it spins when you use electricity, and they read it every month, and they send you a bill based on how much you use, how many kilowatt hours. It's their building unit. So a kilowatt hour costs you 10 cents. So we can convert this answer right here that Josh got into kilowatt hours and then into dollars, okay? So it looks kind of like this. I've got my solution here. There's my variable list there, just saying. Here's what you do. You take your 864,000 joules <coughs> and you multiply it by a conversion factor. 10 cents is equivalent to 3.6 million joules. And since you need joules on the bottom, it goes down here. So if you take the 864,000, multiply it by $0.1, divide by 3.6 times 10 to the 6, you get $0.024, which is two and a half cents. That's what it costs to run your hair dryer for eight minutes. The next time your parents yelling at you for leaving the light on and wasting electricity, wait till they calm down. Okay? Don't show them your solution. They'll get mad. They'll get madder, right? Let them calm down, and then later, show them your calculation of how much you actually wasted, leaving the light on for an extra night. You can calculate it, right? And it won't be that much. I think if you leave a light bulb on, I mean, this is like 18 light bulbs per hour. So one light bulb for 18 hours is about two cents. It's not that much. But it adds up, because you've got 20 or 30 light bulbs, you leave them on the whole month, in the attic or the basement or something, it, it adds up. Okay. All right, so those examples are how we just use this little equation, okay? One more thing to note. What would you do if you had to find the time? Uh, I don't know where it is. If you had to find the time, how would you solve P equals W over T for time. What'd you do? If you multiply both sides by W, you would get P times W equals W squared over T. That wasn't very helpful. Any other ideas? How would you get time by itself? Yes, Natalie. Yeah, so here's the thing to remember. You cannot solve for things in denominators. 
But your variable is in the denominator, get it out of the denominator first. So I would just cross multiply. So I get 1 times w equals p times t, which is what Natalie did, right? Now you can solve for t by dividing both sides by p. Okay? So when you solve for something in the denominator, get it out of the denominator first. You can't just take the divide both sides by w. If you divided both sides by w, you would get p over w equals 1 over t. Dividing this side by w doesn't get p in the top. It's still in the bottom. You still have to solve for it, right? So just be careful on those. All right, the last one I want to show you is what happens when we mix the last idea, work energy theorem, with the new idea, power. Okay? Here's what we got. I got a fire truck, and I need to build an engine for it. And I'm a mechanical engineer, so I need to know how much power my engine needs. So I am going to figure out how much power we need. So I've got a fire truck, and now the fire truck is changing energy, right? So I'm going to get my purple marker here. My fire truck is going to be going on a level road. So it starts here at rest, and it's going to speed up, and eventually it's going to be going nice and fast. And it's going to be a level road, so I'm going to call this H equals zero. So what is H initial? What is the height of the fire truck initially? Zero. zero. I've saved this for you guys, so you can just watch if you want. What is the final height of the fire truck? It's also zero. What is the initial velocity of the fire truck? Zero. Starts at rest. What's the final velocity of the fire truck? 25 meters per second. We have the mass of the fire truck is 2,500 kilograms. Sorry, now you're locking in. And what else do we know? We know the time is, is it eight seconds? 8.0 seconds. We do not know the work. It doesn't tell us energy is conserved, right? Obviously it's not. We're turning fuel into motion. So kinetic energy is not conserved. And we want to find the power. Okay? So to solve this is going to involve two steps. We're going to solve a problem like the last idea, the work energy theorem, to find the work. Once we know the work, we can now use our new equation, power equals work over time. Okay? So let's just kind of review how we solve these problems. Step one, I'm going to apply the work energy theorem. Me final equals me initial plus work. That is always going to look like this. And if you're having trouble, this is the best way to do it. That's 1 half mg final squared plus mgh final. That's the final energy. That's going to equal the initial energy. 1 half mg initial squared plus mgh initial and then plus w. So if you want to put that in your toolbox, you are welcome to. When you apply that, you're going to get this. Now you've got to go through your variable list and decide what doesn't belong. What gets clobbered, right? What does the initial height being zero clobber over here? clobbers this term here, right? The initial potential energy is zero. So that goes away. We don't have to worry about it. What is the final height being zero clobber? That's that one, right? The initial velocity is zero. So that clobbers this term. So when we're all let, when we're done, we have this expression, and our goal is to solve for work, the energy transfer. And that's not so hard, because it's done, right? We have the work on the right, we have that on the left. So here we go. The work, the energy transfer, simply is one half the mass times the final velocity squared. Okay, got a number for us there, Laura? What? Joules? What? Joules. Joules. It's energy. So, to get our fire truck going, we got to add 781,000 joules of energy to it. Okay? Somehow. With a motor. An engine. All right. Step two. Once we know the work, we can now 
evaluate power is the work divided by the time. That is 781,000 joules divided by 8.0 seconds, which gives you a power of, or 98,000 watts, or 98, well, I like this, watts, or a good engineer will never say a number that's not between zero and a thousand. So that's why they use metrics prefix. It makes every number between zero. So instead of saying 98,000, they would say 98 kilowatts. So there you go. That's the power you need for your fire truck if you want to get it going 25 meters per second in eight seconds on level ground. Now be careful. One of the homework problems has a truck going uphill. So if it's going uphill, then the final height is not zero and you can't clobber that turn. Keep it in there. You can still find the work, right? If it's a roller coaster, you need to find the power it takes to get the ride to the top of the hill with a certain velocity in a certain amount of time. You can still do it. Just be careful when you're knocking turns off here. You kind of get in the groove and just kind of knock off two or three, and you knock off the wrong one, you can't get it right. So just be careful when you're thinking about that, okay? All right, so the first six problems on problem set three are just practice doing little problems like the first two examples, okay? The first six problems are just solving this equation for something. The last three, or four, seven, eight, nine, and ten, are, are problems where you've got to do both things. You've got to use the work energy theorem to find the work, and then use the work to find the power or the time or something, okay? All right, so problem set two, you should be getting close to being finished, hopefully. You worked on it yesterday in class, you worked on it last night a little bit, you got some questions for me today, right? I mean, you should be either stuck or finished or you didn't go home and do anything last night. That's the only two options, stuck or finished. I guess three options, or you didn't do anything last night. It's not due until next Tuesday, okay? And this assignment's not due till Wednesday. Monday we'll do a lab, there'll be no new assignments. On Wednesday, I'll have a review for you, okay? But we're done now, there's no more new stuff in this unit. So hopefully you can finish up problem set two here today. Work on three, you can work on it Tuesday, you don't have to do it on the weekend unless you're just really behind. You can, you can work on it Tuesday, after school, whatever. Um, and then next week on Wednesday we'll review and Thursday we'll have our little unit test. Okay? All right, so I'm done. Go ahead and work on uh, problem set three. Or if you have questions or want to work on two, you can do that too. You've got about 25 minutes.